What are you most optimistic when you look at this report? Well, what we're starting to see is this sort of role model effect. Um, so as more women are going into politics, as we're starting to see a little bit more parity at the top of organizations, it's starting to create a bit more of a positive momentum. And I think that's why we're starting to see a bit of a narrowing of the gender gap today. That's why we're starting to see slightly more improved trend lines. But it's still going to take a lot of other changes if we're trying going to try to speed up um, parity instead of waiting a century. Okay, are, are, what are the countries that are doing better? What are the ones that are doing worse? And is there a shame in doing worse so that you, you think that actually the trend is, is on this gap getting better? So there, uh, the Nordic countries are once again at the very top of the rankings. Um, out of the top 10, seven are from Europe. Um, the United Kingdom is at 21. The United States is at 53. So there's still a long way to go for most countries, um, including, frankly, the ones at the very top. So Iceland is number one, but it's only closed about 88% of its gender gap. So a lot of countries have um, a lot more progress to make. The good news is that 101 of the countries that were covered between this year and last year actually made some progress. So the majority of countries are heading in the right direction. Um, when you look at women more likely to be displaced by automation, but also almost underrepresented in some of the, you know, the fastest growing jobs, mm. what can people do to change that? Is it, is it education? Is it retraining? Yeah. So it's a, it's a lot of things in combination. One, if you look at those fastest growing professions of the future, uh, it, cloud, cloud computing, 12% of um, the talent in that particular set of roles is women, 15% in engineering, 26% in artificial intelligence. Now, these are all the things that are shaping the future of our economies. So we need them to be managed by, produced by people who are more diverse than they currently are. That's going to be one aspect that's actually going to create a positive momentum. And Second, I think the pipeline does exist. What we're finding is that there is a gap between the pipeline, the women that are coming out with the right kinds of degrees, and um, what is happening in terms of outcomes. So mostly it still comes down to organizations, businesses essentially changing themselves. They're still designed for outdated um, you know, family structures. They're still designed for outdated organizational structures. They're th still thinking about a very different talent pipeline than currently exists today. Um, so how's the U.S. doing and the U.K.? So the U.S. is at 53rd. Um, the United Kingdom is at 21st. And both of these economies are frankly not using their talent as they should be. Now, they have slightly different situations. In both countries, um, you do have the majority of the university graduates being female. But in the United States, they are perhaps not making it to as much positions of professional and skilled roles as they are in the United Kingdom. The U.K. is doing slightly better in political empowerment, which is why it's doing better than the U.S. overall. Um, when we look, Sadia, at you know the, the efforts that the World Economic Forum has done, what are you expecting for 2020? So we've been focused very much on, um, one, getting countries to actually think very differently about setting targets, getting the public sector and the private sector working closely together. There are about 10 economies at the moment that are working with us on setting up pilots to accelerate the pace of change. We expect that to grow to 15 countries over the course of 2020. The second is actually hardwiring gender parity into the future of work. So we're actually working with a number of companies to say, if these are your five top growing professions of the future, how do you build in parity today? And instead of correcting um, actions, you know, five years from now or 10 years from now when it might simply be too late. And then the last is walking the talk ourselves. So we're actually setting forward in 2020 a goal to at least double the participants at our annual meeting in Davos that are female.